Hey there guys, welcome back to another video here on Mystic BDSP Umbreon. So today, we're revisiting a series I did not too long ago, where I looked at the best Pokemon of a single typing in every main game. Well, this time it's going to be a little different, as we're going to be looking at all the best Pokemon for typings in BDSP only. That means we're going to look at all 18 typings and come up with the best Pokemon for each for an in-game playthrough. Now of course, if you guys watched the last series, you already know what I think the best Pokemon is for every typing in Diamond and Pearl from the original releases. But things are different now. We of course have the Fairy typing, which changes things a little bit, and different moves and evolution methods. And all that which really affect other Pokemon as well. So I think that's enough of an introduction for this video. Just keep in mind that this is all my opinion, and this is one of those lists where I think there can be multiple correct answers. So we're going to start things off with the Water typing here. I looked at all the different water types in the game, and of course, if you watched any of my best teams, you know that I'm very partial to Gyarados. It's a very good Pokemon, but it doesn't get a lot of its flying typing. However, we're talking about the water type here, so it doesn't really matter. Now, that being said, there's really only one other Pokemon worth going up against Gyarados, and it's Empoleon. And that's where things got a little interesting. See, to tell you the truth, I actually kind of think Empoleon is the best water type to go with. Why do I feel that way? It's because Empoleon can get a lot out of its move pull when it comes to stab. Gyarados, as we know, it doesn't have any flying type moves, and that kind of works against it a little bit because it really hinders its coverage. As we know, Gyarados really only uses Ice Fang, Rock Slide, and Earthquake as complementary moves to Waterfall, while Empoleon can use Flash Cannon, Grass Knot, and Ice Beam to much better successes. Empoleon also has better defenses than Gyarados, so I don't really understand thinking Gyarados is the better water type here. It made more appearances on best teams that didn't involve Empoleon simply because Empoleon couldn't be involved. So yeah, that's what I'm going to say here. Empoleon is the best water type to use in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, though we can definitely have a dialogue about it in the comments. Next up, we're going through to the Grass Typing. As you could probably guess, the two best Pokemon that talk over here are Rose Raid and Torterra. I don't think you can go all that wrong with making a claim that either is the best, but I have a clear-cut favorite of the two for this typing. Torterra has some issues with its weakness to ice being at the forefront, and while it's got two very powerful stab moves in Earthquake and Woodhammer, it lacks both the power and move pull of Rose Raid. See, the reason why I find Rose Raid to be the best grass type is pretty simple. You can get a Badoo about as soon as you get Turtwig, and thus we default to stats and move pull. Boy. I'd take the Pokemon with Grass, Poison, and Fairy coverage alongside 125 Special Attack over a massive Ice Weakness and only two particularly great moves. That's it then. Rose Raid is the best Grass type. I've given my ruling here. Also, while we're at it, Rose Raid is the best Poison type too. Crobat was the only other Pokemon I considered for this spot, but it lacked the coverage Rose Raid had. It's really not a bad rep of the poison typing though, but I can't see it holding a candle to Rose Raid. Also, you could have considered Dinka here, but when it comes to the stab in the move pool, Rose Raid worked out better as a rep of the poison typing in particular. Let's nail two birds with one stone again. This time, we're going fire and fighting. They're the same Pokemon. And yeah, that's a pretty dead giveaway. Infernape is hands down the best fire type in these games, regardless of the few extra ones included. And of course, by extension, it's the best fighting type. We don't need to waste much time talking over the fire aspect. It's a mixed attacker with great options on both ends of its move pool. Flare Blitz or Flamethrower to start with. I mean, when you have those moves on two attack stats over 100, then like, that puts you a step above the rest. Now, as for the fighting typing, I know a lot of you can see Lucario as a very viable fighting type, the challenge for this title. But come on, folks. Lucario is available by the 6th gym at the earliest, while Infernape is used during the whole game. It can use Focus Blast and Close Combat, which are two of the best fighting moves. Though, let's not forget the biggest travesty in all of Pokemon. Infernape can't learn Drain Punch. That's just wrong, and I'll never understand why Game Freak did this. So, just beyond its fire and fighting prowess, Infernape also has some nice coverage with Earthquake, Shadow Claw, and Acrobatics, 
as well as the ability to set up specially with Calm Mind. There's so much good to talk about with the best starter for Sinnoh, but let's move on before we spend too much time on it. Let's do Dragon next and get it out of the way. It's Garchomp. Altaria is the only other Dragon type you can get prior to the post game, and it's not very good despite having a decent move pool. You're better off waiting for the later game to use Garchomp and its power than settling for Altaria. Truth be told, it's fortunate Garchomp's only competition is Altaria for the Dragon typing, because it's most certainly not the best ground type in these games. No, that goes to Torterra. I have some other options here, but the grass coverage provided by Torterra was important even if it does have a major weakness to ice types. See, Torterra learns Earthquake upon evolution, which is a really big deal. It doesn't have to rely on a stupidly high level or getting the TM out of Wayward Cave. Now, there are plenty of different ground type options in the game, and we're going to talk about a few more which are better at being other types. However, Torterra can take hits and excel at dealing damage with moves it has access to. We can talk more about it in the comments if you guys like, but that's just how I feel. As for another ground type that we can talk about, let's go over the best ice type, Mamoswine. It came close to being the best ground type, but was edged out by Torterra in part due to how much sooner you'd get it. Now, that said, it's really only because there is potential of getting Torterra by around the third gym while Mammoth Swine will take a little longer with Ancient Power needing to be heart scaled back on. However, as an Ice type, it's the cream of the crop. All of the other Pokemon are pretty much landlocked to the Snowpoint City area, but Swineub is available in the underground in non-snowy places. So with it, you'll eventually be able to get Ancient Power on a Palo Swine and then end up with a Majestic Mammo. It's a powerful base 130 attack and will have access to Earthquake, Ice Shard, and Avalanche though a lot of those good moves will come a bit late. And of course Avalanche, as we know from the best team for Platinum, is a meme at this point in time. And it also has negative priority, so yeehaw. Like I said, Mammoth Swine is the wave among Ice types, almost exclusively because it's really the only viable Ice type to use early on. Let's hit another two for one special here in Electric and Steel, as Magnezone checks both of those boxes today. Now, there are definitely some alternatives on the steel end, and we'll get to that, but let's start with the electric side. The only other Pokemon I felt was comparable to Magnezone was Raichu, but ultimately, it doesn't put in the sort of work that this UFO does. Also, guys, don't lie to yourselves. Luxray doesn't hold a candle to Magnezone. The move pull on Luxray wishes it could be as good as Magnezone's. That's just facts. Powerful steel type moves to handle fairy types and a ton of electric options? That's more worth having. It might have a massive ground weakness, but at least Sturdy can help it live in EQ from max health, and I think that's pretty important. So, as for the steel typing, I picked Magnezone again, because I felt when I compared to other steel types in the game, its move pull offered the best sorts of coverage. I originally had thought about putting Bronzong here in this spot. But I honestly ended up figuring that while you can easily find a Psychic option to replace that aspect of Bronzong, it's a bit tougher to roll out an Electric type that compares with Magnezone as we just spoke about. I know that can seem like a little bit of a cop-out using Magnezone's Electrical Prowess as a big reason why it's the best Steel type, but it just honestly feels right to give this title the Magnezone and its fantastic power. Oh, speaking of steel types I considered, here is one that was there with Magnezone and Bronzong as well, Scizor. It's the best bug type to use in Brilliant Diamond, but fell short of the steel typing. Its good bug type moves are definitely some of the best, but that wasn't enough to elevate it into the top steel spot. However, when you're a bug that can hit hard for stab with both of your typings, then that's saying something. Iron Head? Bullet Punch and X Scissor are all pretty great moves, though the lack of coverage is a bit unfortunate beyond the stab. As for Shining Pearl, your best bug type there is Heracross, which might be why it reappears on some of the teams late into the game. It's elevated by strong stab moves from Megahorn to Close Combat, and its 125 attack stat is pretty fantastic. Heracross wins in that game by virtue of Scizor being version exclusive and no other bug type really being able to step up to its power. Let's go with the Psychic type next, and this one leads to an argument we've had before, Gardevoir or Alakazam. They're both so good, but only one is the best, and as was the case so many times before. I'm gonna have to give it to Alakazam here. 
They're both a couple of Pokemon with very similar move pulls, with Gardevoir actually arguably having the better one by a slim margin, since it can learn Thunderbolt and Moonblast versus Alakazam Shockwave and Dazzling Gleam. The big deal in these games is that Rolts and Abra are both available early enough where there is no advantage in that regard either way. We have to go down to the stats really. And as always, Alakazam wins that with 135 special attack and 120 speed. Guardi simply isn't that fast or strong. And even though its odds of taking a hit are better than Alakazam's, that doesn't overly matter in the long run, since Alakazam doesn't have to take hits. It is almost always going to outspeed and constantly have the chance to knock out opposing Pokemon in one hit. I'm giving the win to Alakazam today because it was better where it really mattered. But I know this will trigger the Guardi stands in the comments. Remember, I really like Gardevoir too, but we're talking about Alakazam here, folks. Speaking of disappointing Gardevoir fans, let's do it again real quick. Clefable is the best fairy type to use in BDSP. It doesn't have the stats that Gardevoir has, but it makes up for it in being a coverage machine. These games give you every good move imaginable that Clefable can learn, for very cheap in the Veilstone department store. And at that point, it's hard to go against Clefable. You can put aside needing to find the Moonstone and only 95 base special attack when this Pokemon is actually able to cover every hole on your team. I can understand that some of you guys are tired of hearing about Clefable and how good it is, and why the Velston Department Store is the greatest place you can spend your Poké Dollars. But all I have to say is this. Quit being jelly. Like for real. Let's see. We've got the Dark type next. And this one I had a bit of an internal discussion on for a little bit. It came down to two Pokémon. Drapion versus Houndoom. Just who was the better Dark type in these games? It's almost in a way like the Clefable versus Gardevoir argument. The whole thing is power versus coverage, though I ended up giving the edge to power this time. Houndoom is stronger by a lot, like enough for it makes a difference. These two have the same physical attack, but Houndoom outshines Drapion by 50 more points in special attack, meaning it's got the makings of being at the very least a fine mixed attacker, something Drapion can't say. The Elemental Fangs, Earthquake, and Great Stab moves are in Drapion's move pool, which makes it very attractive as a Pokemon to use. But Houndoom has some tremendous Fire and Dark Stab in its pool, as well as access to Thunder Fang and its own Poison type move in Sludge Bomb. That means it can still handle Fairy types, it can defend itself against Water types, at least a little bit, and its two Stab moves will hit like a truck since they're of the special variety. Now. I will give up that Drapion can take hits a bit better for sure, but at the end of the day, these two Pokemon have the same speed, so that's just one thing less to compare. The only other thing there is to bring up in Drapion's defense is the sniper ability. But crits aren't a guarantee, and even then, all it will do is make a move like Cross Poison or Night Slash hit as hard as Houndoom's Flamethrower and Dark Pulse do at a normal rate. I know you guys already have a ton of opinions throughout the video, but let me know where you stand on Drapion vs Houndoom as well. Next up, we'll hit on the ghost typing real quick. You guys know I've got a lot of love for Miss Magius, but I can't deny that Gengar is the best ghost type. It's got 130 base special attack, 110 speed, and all those great coverage moves in its pool that it can easily get from the Veilstone department store. Miss Magius has some good coverage too in its pool, but it simply can't touch the premium Gengar stats. Let's go with the rock type next, and this one is going to end up being Golem. I wanted to go with Rhyperior, but unfortunately you're not going to find the protector until the post game, so it was off the table. Looking at the Pokedex, there just wasn't a rock type as well off as Golem, as there are too many detriments to using Rampardos, and Sudowoodo just ends up being outclassed. If only Eviolite actually existed in these games. I'd have probably tried to make the argument for Rhydon, but, but, oh well. So at the penultimate spot typing today, we've got Flying, and this one came down to a few Pokemon. Honchkrow, Crobat, and Staraptor. Now, as you guys know, I'm a fan of Honchkrow. Well, really, I'm a fan of all three, but whatever. Honchkrow is seriously gunning for this spot, like big time. It has great stats, a fair amount of flying and dark type stab moves, and the super luck ability is fantastic. Truth be told, I think it's safe to say it's the best flying type for Brilliant Diamond. 
you just have to acquire a Dusk Stone, which is surely possible early enough into the game. Though, that leaves us with either Crobat or Staraptor for Shining Pearl. And of course, I've gotta go with the early bird there. Crobat isn't a bad Pokemon at all, its poison typing is nice to have, and it's a speedy boy with a very little bit of bulk too. However, its attack stat can't really compare with Staraptor, and it lacks great coverage. It's a close one, sure, but I think Staraptor for me personally is the best flying type for Shining Pearl. So that brings us to our final typing of the day, Normal. There are so many different Normal types in these games, and at least a quarter of them are pretty damn solid in a playthrough. However, you guys know me well enough that I've got to pick Staraptor for this position. I'm kidding. I probably pissed a lot of you guys off in the comments because I've been talking about Staraptor a lot. But no, the best normal type is actually going to have to be Snorlax. It's easy to get Munchlax now about halfway through your gym challenge. And its absolutely tremendous special defense and attack help it stand out from the crowd. It has plenty of moves in its pool to cover others. From Heavy Slam to High Horsepower to Brick Break you just get a lot of mileage out of this fat boy. And while Return isn't back for BDSP, it doesn't hurt Snorlax at all. The big guy is once again the top normal option in a region. So that's it. We went through all the typings, picked the best Pokemon of each, and had some fun along the way. This was all my opinion, of course. So I'm very curious to hear from you guys what you think the best Pokemon of every type is. I know this type of video always creates a little controversy, so I look forward to getting your take on it. For now though, I'm going to wrap this one up with one last note. The Celadon department store sucks. And if you live in Kanto, you should consider importing from Veilstone. That's all. Hey hey guys, thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all of this without them. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.